here, and so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. And we are here on a Saturday, special Saturday, because we have two games today starting out at four o'clock i'm sorry 4 30 this evening we have cincinnati versus pittsburgh um two teams that still have playoff hosts surprisingly pittsburgh is still in the playoff hunt without really having a quarterback and then we have the buffalo bills now the latest of the hottest teams they are so hot that you don't want to face them going against the san diego san diego they would want to go back to san diego the L.A. Chargers, where Kellen Moore said, nah, I don't want to be the interim head coach because I don't want that to mess up my chances of becoming a head coach elsewhere. So we have that. And then tomorrow, of course, we have our Dallas Cowboys at 425 against the Miami Dolphins. And we are going to be shorthanded. Um, unfortunately, um, Tyron Smith is listed as doubtful. And the thing about the Dallas Cowboys is when they are doubtful, nobody who has been doubtful has played. So unless Tyron Smith is going to be the only one, the only one this year as well as last year that's played when they were doubtful, he, I doubt he's going to play. Zach Martin, who went through the walkthrough playoff practice yesterday, and understand when they say practice, practice these days, um, this late in the season, they're not hitting. They're not going through. It's basically walkthroughs and installs of what your game plan is for the week. Uh, Zach Martin went through the walkthrough and uh, is questionable. And if here's the other side of the coin. When somebody is questionable, Pretty much they always play for the Dallas Cowboys. So that's where we are. Now, this is a chance for the Dallas Cowboys, of course, to get up off the mat. 10-4 and four going against the Miami Dolphins that are in basically about the same boat. Miami is also known as not beating any teams with a winning record and that people still kind of doubt a little bit. Uh, Tariq Hill is going to play. Uh, we don't know if he's 100% or not. He did not play last week. He did not practice early part of the week. Uh, but again, with all the trash talking for Micah Parsons and crew, uh, with Tariq Hill in the offseason, wild horses could not keep the two of those guys off. Now, one of the things uh, that have been the big problems, of course, with the Cowboys, not just this year, but this has been throughout uh, their recent history, is stopping the run. Now, the Dallas Cowboys are built to be a team that can get after the quarterback. Well, that works great when teams are passing in one dimensional. Unfortunately, without Hankins, who hopefully he will be back soon, he's not going to be playing this week, um, is a big cog in stopping the run. You've got to win the line of scrimmage. And thus far, we haven't been able to do that. The other problem with this is because it's about speed, you have lighter guys that are in the middle, lighter guys that are linebackers and things, and they can get bullied. Now, Dan Quinn is going to have to come up with a scheme to be able to use that speed. Um, that may end up being more working the gaps instead of saying, you know, this is your gap. And snap of the ball, you're jumping into that gap to try and reestablish the line of scrimmage as opposed to being a read and reacts defense. Um, that's one way that you use your speed. For me, when I played nose guard at JMU, I was very much undersized. And when I had a double team on me, basically I was getting launched back there with the cornerbacks and the safeties. But when it was go right now to that gap, I could use my speed to my advantage and get my head past the hips where they wouldn't be able to get an angle and i'm sure dan quinn has studied this and come up with different game plans to work on stopping the run and we'll see where we are against the miami dolphins now again the miami dolphins have had some incredible games where they are literally 70 to 20 against the denver broncos but going against teams with winning records they have not fared very well 
And this may be a case of, or hopefully this is a case of, the Cowboys are that good team that continue that streak for them. Now, understand, we're going to be facing a team in Miami that is going to be desperate as well because their road is brutal as well. They've got us, they've got the Baltimore Ravens, and then they may be playing for the division crown against Buffalo. If they win any one of these games, they've got it sewn up. But if they go on a three-game lose streak, and Buffalo continues to win, all of a sudden, they've got their division. So you can count on a Miami team that will be motivated, of course, because they're playing the Cowboys. And if you want recognition, bitch slap the Dallas Cowboys. So this is going to be a tough match. Now, the thing that makes me feel good, and, and this is where I hate to say this, but, you know, a lot of people were beginning to give the Cowboys a lot of props. Dak Prescott, you know, MVP, and Micah Parsons, you know, defensive MVP. The Cowboys, they're hot. They beat the Eagles. You know, they're, you know, the team now. It's been the flavor of the week in the NFL, and it doesn't seem to last for very long. Teams get up there, and then all of a sudden, pfft, Buffalo. You know, right now, people are thinking Buffalo, you know, is a team. You don't want to face Buffalo. Well, Buffalo's been that team and been a team that's been, you know, they need to get rid of Josh Allen and fire the coach. Now they're the hot team again. And so teams rise and fall. Miami has been the hot team that was the Super Bowl favorite there after they ended up winning against uh, Denver 70-20. to 20. And then they lost to Buffalo, okay? And then after Buffalo, for a while there, it was the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars bitch slap Buffalo. And were thought to be the team that could actually get home field advantage throughout. And at the moment, they're on a slide where Trevor Lawrence is questionable to play, and they may not make the playoffs. So things change quickly in the NFL, so don't get too upset or too excited about where you are. Even the Eagles. If they get a win against the Giants, can feel a whole lot better about themselves. If they lose, well, then it's going to get really, really ugly. So before I get over here and do some work, we're going to be live streaming uh, starting at 4.30 today, of course, with the games. I'm going to try and get me about five good hours more worth of work here at the Red Brick House. Heck, if the game is a snooze fest because it's Pittsburgh, you know, maybe we'll work on screwing together our... Uh, 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 shutters over here while we're watching the game. At least we'll have something exciting excuse me, to look at. And let's take a look and listen to what they have to say about the Cowboys. Mike T, Dak and the Cowboys looking to rebound on the road against Tua and the Dolphins. What's the key to this game? Dallas's rush defense greedy in their four losses. Dallas has allowed an average of 192 yards rushing. 266 last week to Buffalo. Of all the weapons that Miami has, if they don't stop Raheem Mostert and the run game, nothing else will matter in that game. Well, I think that's a reasonable way to look at it. This game will almost certainly be decided up front and on the ground. The Dolphins have the fourth best rushing attack in the NFL, averaging 140 yards per game, while the Cowboys, in their four losses this season, have allowed 192 rushing yards per game, including 266 last week on the road against Buffalo. And so, Dan, I know you've put together a couple of tapes for us on this game. Let's start with that look at it, what we expect from Mike McDaniel and that Miami offense against Dallas's D. Advantage Miami. Mike McDaniel coached against this defense in 2021 when he was with San Francisco. And if you watch at least the, the mindset of how he wanted to attack, it was, I respect the aggressive aspect of Dallas's defense. We are going to use it against them toss counter so they're going to use motion at the snap and they're trying to toss the ball one way and get everybody on the defense to flow that way and then bring that fullback back across essentially where he came from so to get the defense the sideline to sideline flow and then hurt them because of that over over aggressive and speed based flow mm. and then a little bit of the bootleg play action now maybe in Miami to be pistol or gun because that's more of their nature, but you fake the run one way and you're trying to get a man-beating route going opposite, which is a deep cross. No one plays more coverage than Dallas. No one shreds man coverage more than Miami. And you get that defense, again, to overflow mm -hmm. and overcommit. I think the second thing is this. 
Perimeter screens will be a huge part of this game. Dallas's pass rush, Mike McDaniel will minimize it. No one throws more perimeter screens than Miami Dolphins. He'll get this defense stretched out sideline to sideline. He'll get them to pressure one side or the other. I promise you this, if that's Tyreek Hill this weekend, that's a touchdown. Mm. So Mike McDaniel had a very clear plan two years ago. Respect the aggressive aspect of Dallas's defense, but hurt it. I think two things stand out in this game. One, Dallas' defense is bottom five when it comes to defending motion. No one uses motion more than the Miami Dolphins. Mm -hmm. Dallas' defense plays man coverage more than anybody. No one shreds man coverage more than Tua Tungavailoa. So this is advantage, at least scheme, tape, paper, Dolphins. And, and, and so that feels a lot to me, and that's such a good tape. And again, a reminder for those of you who, who didn't pick up on it when he said it, that those offenses you were watching were Mike McDaniel offenses right. in San Francisco before he came to uh, Miami. So that, that's literally him designing it here. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the Cowboys have to do something that we really haven't seen them do, right? They have to rise up defensively yep. against a team they probably won't jump way out in front of early, and they have to stand up physically at the point of attack and all that stuff. Can they do it? Uh, that's a big question right now, Grady. Yeah, and you, you, you know, you look at last week. Last week against Buffalo, Buffalo completely dominated the line of scrimmage. No doubt. Okay, and we know in this league, this is a repeater league. Like, once you show on take that, you're problem. vulnerable. Guess what's going to happen the next week? Other deal, opponent's going to come right back to see if you solve those problems. And until Dallas shows that they've solved that problem, expect Miami to bring a heavy dose of their run game. Mm -hmm. As much as we talk about Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, and, and rightfully so, Miami is a run team. Miami wants to run the football because a lot of things are predicated off their run, off their run action. Yeah. So if Dallas can't stop it early, they're going to be in for a long day. So it's Mostert and it's HN and it's those screens that Dan is talking about and the possibility for big plays. Mike T, what do you think? I think it's going to go to the other side of the ball. Dallas is going to have to function on offense early, Greeny, because if not, it's going to be Buffalo 2.0. Dallas is second in the league in first half point differenti differentiation at 115. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that allows their defense to do what Dan said earlier, rush the passer. But when Buffalo was able to control the line of scrimmage, and I give them a ton of credit, they just stayed with it. And Josh Allen had seven completions, and they just wore down a very light Dallas mm -hmm. defense. So if Dallas can move the ball, which they couldn't against Buffalo Greeny, that will make Miami to play both run and pass, and it will make them a lot easier for Dallas to defend. So, so the, the way that game started last week in Buffalo, it was a strange beginning it to the game. It was a real strange Because game. the game got away from the Cowboys more than they were being outplayed. Sure. By that, I mean they had the, the, the roughing flow the passer, of the game. You know, the roughing the passer penalty gave Buffalo a touchdown. I didn't think that was a good call. Then the, the, the Cowboys have an opportunity to throw a touchdown. You know, Brandon Cooks, they don't hit it. Then they block the punt. You know, they run into the punter and all that. Sure. And before you know it, they're way behind it. No, the, penal the penalty certainly dictated the flow of the game or That's helped what I mean. the flow of yeah. the game for Buffalo. Yeah. No so, doubt. So, so how mm -hmm. do the Cowboys, to Mike T's point, well, how do they play this game from in front? Well, I think to Mike T's point in offense. So here's why there's, in many ways, such a disparity home and road for Dallas's offense. Go At ahead. Home, Give Dak us some knowledge cheat. on that. And not in a literal way, but in a, because he's so smart way. When he gets the, um, at home at the line of scrimmage, he's able to use his cadence and he uses his voice inflection at the line of scrimmage. Would you know this? Yep. When quarterbacks do that, they try to control everything. On the road, they can't. And so defense can do things late that you don't get attention to. They're going to pressure off the slot here and drop the safety down. This is second down, leads to a two-yard loss. Well, that leads to third down, and they get off the field. That never happens at home for Dallas. This is second down in the red zone. Dak at home would go, hot, 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 hot. He would see the safety, go to line of scrimmage, check out of a play, and we're okay. Second down in the red zone, he doesn't have the time or the voice inflection to see it. It leads to third down in the red zone. You get off the field, and those are three points instead mm -hmm. of seven. So at home, Dak does a great job of using his cadence, using the voice inflection, because for people at home to understand, we control the defense when we're at home by our voice. You have to, at some point, tell us what you're doing. Hot, hot, hot. You know, or, or code words. Here we he go. Like, Here we go. Thanks. Yeah, and so yeah. Dak knows, okay, you guys are doing this. We're in the right play. Great. On the road, you, the defense gets to decide when and how. I don't because I don't use voice inflection on the road anymore. Because you guys can't hear you. Correct. It's because the simple. crowd noise. And yeah. So often there's a silent cadence. We're not even speaking. So that, that's why the offense is so much more in control at home because in many ways Dak is so smart. They're always in a good play. So then how do the Cowboys approach this game offensively, D. Wood? I think a lot of it has to do with what Mike T. was talking about. 
Dallas is at their – I always say Dallas is a front-running team. And what I mean by that is when, when they're able to get out, get out of the blocks early, score early, that dictates how they're going – ultimately how they're going to play, play the game, rest of the game. I think it's going to be imperative on Dallas. they got to get out of the blocks early. they, they got to score that's, early that's without because I think it, it, it breeds confidence in both sides of the ball. Now, the, you know, when the Dallas they gotta offense – got to take the crowd out of it. they got to take the crowd out of the game. And when, when Dak and that offense, they score early – the, the defense, they start to feast. Guys, if Josh Allen was sitting right here, he gave us the answers to the test. Remember totally what right. he said after the game? Yeah, I got an A. I didn't do any of the work in the class project. Something I could relate to. Yeah, going yeah. Back he didn't school. do anything. Understood. Right. But the point is, seven completions, 31 points. If they don't fix their run defense, nothing else run. matters. They will get bludgeoned. They want to rush the passer, as D would just said. They can't rush the passer if all they're doing is defending the run. Let, let me give you one more. There you go. It's that simple. The Cowboys have to stop the run. The two things that have always killed us in the playoffs is unable to run the football and stopping the run. we got to fix that. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We have got to fix it. All right, good people. That's all I got for you right now. I'm going to get to work, and um, we will see you guys real, and I mean real soon. Peace out.